This is probably going to be one of, if not the dumbest videos I have ever made, which is saying a lot. First of all, I will give you some backstory. So the amazing Joella Reads tagged me a while back to do the Booktronet All-Star Charity Challenge, which was a trend for a while. It's a challenge that was created by no one in particular, um, and sadly it's ended. So the reason that I'm turning it into something else, I'm putting a spin on it, is not at all to disrespect you, Joella, for tagging me. I really appreciate that you did that, and it did look fun. But here are the reasons why I'm putting my own spin on it. Number one, the challenge had already ended. Um, the goal had been met for the charity part of it. And also, when I looked at the submission form, um, I saw that a lot of the things on there I hadn't read, so I figured that my video would actually end up being kind of bland. Also, the submission form has been closed, so even if I wanted to film that whole challenge now, I wouldn't be able to, so that's why. Um, but this was originally going to be the Booktonet challenge, putting aside um, its creator, it, it was like itself for a good cause. So congratulations to everybody who raised enough money for that, but we're doing this now. <laughs> I asked a bunch of you on Twitter, what are your favorite books or what is a popular book you feel every booktuber should read? And thank you everyone for submitting, but also like, sorry, sorry to everyone who submitted. I'm going to look at this list, this long list of books and see what have I read? What are my opinions on that book? Or if I haven't read those books, which is mostly the case because uh, I looked through the list a little bit, uh, what do I think it's about? Can I guess what the book is about? And then I haven't looked any of it up. If I don't know, I haven't looked it up. So I'll guess what it is and can I guess correctly before searching it up to see what the actual result is. Alright, uh, let's get started before I start regretting this. If you submitted multiple books, I probably won't take all of them. I'll just take a couple out of what you said. But here's our first option. Uh, I see Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the, Lord of the Rings. Um, first... <laughs> is really really boring very boring those are my opinions i tried i tried to read the books and there are two page long rants about grass and about how these goblins interact with pebbles that's just that's not an actual like pr that's not what's actually in the book but that's a really good summary of how i felt while trying to read it i'm so invested in the story now thanks to the amazing movies um and i'm never gonna discredit the books because world building is great but <laughs> You don't have to go so overboard, that's what I'm saying. To Kill a Mockingbird, awesome. Another person said To Kill a Mockingbird as well, yeah. Um, I really appreciate this, it's hard for me to roast it. I just liked the book, so, I mean, approved? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's hard for me to roast books I actually like. The Outsiders. Barely remember this, I read this for ninth grade and it's just a bunch of teenagers wandering around the city and it has something to do with murder. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on, hold on. I, I gotta hold my hair back for this one. Hi. The only reason you genuinely think of The Outsiders as your favorite book is because you wish, you wish you were a pony boy. You wish you had the boys to be with you. You wish you had the pony boy squad. All right. I'm just I'm just telling it like it is. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. Green eggs and ham. There's not much I can say about it other than it's better than most modern poetry today. So I guess that's not a roast. If this is your favorite book, a good job. It's just, it's it's a book. It's a good book. The people next door. I'm going to guess what the people next door is about. Hmm. <laughs> the title pretty much says it all. I'm going to guess that it's this suspense thriller type thing like every other adult thrill that says the blank next door it's probably going to be a, a copy of all of those uh, exactly like that where it's like oh the person next door has a secret or they're a, a government agent or okay let's look it up okay the people next door by christopher ransom a perfect family Mick and Amy Nash are an ordinary couple leading ordinary lives and then into the house next door move their renders. Beautiful, charming, perfect, and not at all what they pretend to be. An evil secret. That's that's pretty much exactly what I predicted, isn't it? Next up, Giovanni's room. Like like Giov like Gio Is this some kind of uh Jojo's Bizarre Adventure spin-off? 
So what happens in Giovanni's room? Is he... I haven't actually watched part five, so I'm just guessing based off the name, but I mean, if you're into uh, jo JoJo's Bizarre Adventure novel spinoffs, I, I would approve of that. Giovanni definitely isn't a real name, it's just, it's only from the TV show. There's no other usage of this name. I'll look it up and see what it's about. But, um, okay, before I look, Giovanni's Room is about Giorno. It's like this spin-off novel about where Giorno himself, he's done with the mob stuff. He's done with the stands and all the fighting and he just like settles down with a family and like a dog that doesn't die because Jojo Bizarre Adventure hates dogs. That's what I'm going to say it's about. Okay. <laughs> It is a 1956 novel by James Baldwin. The book focuses on the events in the life of an American man living in Paris and his feelings and frustrations with his relationship with other men in his life, particularly an Italian bartender named Giovanni. Can't roast it, but I was wrong. I was, <laughs> I was wrong about what it was, it was about. The same person who submitted that actually gave a lot of other ones, but I'm not going to discuss them because I haven't read all of them. And even just from the titles, I can't guess what they're about. So thank you, though. I, and I'm also sorry that I butchered your favorite book. Next, we got a lineup for classics, Jane Eyre. I hope I pronounced that right. For fantasy, Mistborn, a Brandon Sanderson. And for sci-fi, The Lathe of Heaven. So I know two of those books will not roast them, will never roast them. Those, good job. Good job. <laughs> but what is the Lathe of Heaven? Alright. It's sci-fi. I was going to say, oh, maybe it's historical. It's sci-fi. So, if it's sci-fi, I'm gonna guess that, like every other science fiction book, it is about this dystopian society where people are forced to conform and, like, there's some religious undertones, maybe, which would set it apart from other things. Uh, and it's like, I don't know what a lathe is. Oh, I'm so dumb. Is a lathe like those spoon things? Like the scoop spoon things? So I'm gonna guess that it's actually about like a cooking society. You know, like in, it's like they call themselves heaven and uh, they have this uh, cooking society where like they force their uh, sci-fi cyborg cult members to cook. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop with that one. The Lathe of Heaven is a 1971 science fiction novel by American writer La 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 La. The plot concerns a character whose dreams after past, whose dreams alter past and present reality. That is not about cooking, but it does sound interesting. Next person has Taste a Silent Voice, my second favorite manga series of all time. I'm never gonna roast this. The one thing I'll say about it is that it is a, a it's it's this really niche like genre where some people are saying, wait, is it shonen or is it romance? Like which one is it? Is it for girls or is it for boys? Like people make that weird generalization anyways. But what I mean is, is it shonen or is it shoujo? And it's this great mix where anyone can read it. Obviously anyone can read shonen or shoujo, it doesn't matter. But anyone can read it in the sense that anyone who wouldn't normally read shoujo can also enjoy this. Anyone who wouldn't normally read shonen can also enjoy this. Where it's, it's just weird. It's just weird. It falls into all these categories. That's not a roast. That's not a critique. I tied my hair back again because it's actually getting kind of hot in this room. Probably because of all the uh, epic roasts. But um, at this point, I think it's pretty obvious that I know what I'm talking about. Even when I haven't read the actual book, I've been pretty spot on, if you can remember, about what the books are about. So I'm going to go through with just rapid fire the list, this list of the books that you guys submitted on Twitter that I haven't read and you tell me in the comments how right am I because I know I'm like I'm at least like a certain amount of right but how right am I on like a scale of right to very right this song will save your life I don't know what it, that's about but that is such an entitled thing to say if you listen to my new song it will save your life it will cure all diseases listen to my song please and the book is about somebody who's that desperate just that desperate to be number one on the billboard charts this group of Tom Cruise enthusiasts um, trying to hunt down Tom Gru Cruise not to kill him but so that they can that they can get him to star in their indie film that they really want Tom Cruise to be in called Catch and Kill. 
everything freezes in New York uh, so fast that you have to like run away from the ice or else you'll die and um, it's about this group of people but they're all stuck in the only warm place um, among this apocalypse. Okay, I don't know at what point I stopped joking and started actually making up stories on the spot, but that's where we are right now. You, you signed up for this video by clicking it. A radio station called Eleven, and they only talk about the character Eleven from uh, Stranger Things because they're huge fanatics, and it's basically this nonfiction story about how their uh, radio station grew two middle-aged uh, former college buddies that are now like they kind of peaked in high school and now they're just really bored with life so they're two college like former college buddies that are now in their like mid 30s mid 40s they have families and they're coming together because they have this wacky conspiracy theory on what stars are and stuff like that about satellites and they have all these wacky theories that they need to put together and bring out into the public to reveal the truth they're trying to defend their city against murderous bears that are trying to come in from all sides and they gotta like build walls like some attack on titan kind of stuff. Strange the Dreamer about somebody who has nightmares about a bad experience at Chuck E. Cheese. Throne of Glass, uh, Elsa, but she uses her powers to make furniture? Uh, white teeth? Dentists, enough said. Chronicles of Nick, like Chronicles of Narnia, but instead it's a teenager who's having a quarter-life crisis. Cruel Prince, oh wait, I've already seen that. Okay, Six of Crows duology. It's about crows around the world raging war against the human race because they're sick of eating garbage. Chris Quotient, uh, probably about math, so I don't like it. Starless Sea, uh, about a guy who thinks that the sky is actually the sea and that the moon landing is fake. Dying is my business, a person who thinks that assassination should be legal. A Quiet Kind of Thunder or Your Welcome Universe, two different books. They are this person's favorite because of the deaf rep and selective mutism rep. And after I read that, I decided I couldn't roast these books even if I don't know what they're about because we need more books that have deaf rep. I have read one book ever with a deaf main character and I would like to see more in the market. That's my only point. Ooh, juicy. Okay, The Hunger Games, Divergent, Red Queen. First of all, the people who submitted the books did not know what this, the video would be about. And I'd like to apologize. I'd like to apologize. I didn't know what the video would be about. Even like now, I don't know what this video is. Um, but anyways, to, to follow procedure, The Hunger Games is so overrated. It is important, but it is overrated. That they, they barely reach the bar for entertaining to me. Hung, uh, the, the Hunger Games is a bit higher up. And Red Queen is trying too hard to be the next Hunger Games slash Divergent. That, they're the holy trinity of mediocre YA fantasy. That is my opinion. That is probably the first genuine roast um, <laughs> where I actually have heart, I have like, convinci conviction behind it. But I, yeah, those are my opinions on your favorite books. I think I will end this disastrous video here. I didn't go through everybody's recommendations because some books, like, I just didn't have much to say about them. If you got this far, I really appreciate it. If you submitted, if you made that sacrifice to give me the name of your favorite book, just to have me drag it all over the ground, I really appreciate that. Thank you, everyone. Um, and I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, Joella, uh, thank you again for tagging me to do the Bookternet challenge i did it in a way it's the it's a similar concept um you can tag me anytime i really appreciate that you tag me to do this this <laughs> um and that's that's about all i have to offer thank you for watching and i'll see you next week <laughs>